two commands that you'll see used extensively throughout the class is touch and rm. Touch is primarily used to create an empty file. It's just a quick way of creating a file that we can manipulate. RM is used to delete files and directories. RM has some important switches that you need to know about to use it safely. First is the I command, which will prompt you before removing something. Many times you'll delete something impulsively and realize later on right after you press the key to enter and delete it that you did not want to delete that file. Sometimes being prompted before removing is just enough time for you to save making a mistake. On the other hand there are times where you don't want to be asked any questions at all and you can use the dash F option to not prompt and to force removal. The R option is used to remove directories recursively. It is especially dangerous when using the R and the F in combination when deleting a directory structure. Now let's look at using both of those commands from the command line. First, I'll demonstrate touch. And as I said, touch is really just a way to create an empty file. So if I was to touch file 2 and then ls-l, we can see that file 2 was created and that it is empty. So once again, it allows us to create files quickly instead of having to open up an editor and then save something. That was not its original use, but that is the purpose that you'll typically see it used for in the class. Its original use was to update the timestamps on a particular file. This would allow different users to make modifications and then update the timestamps or access time to the file. The rm command is used to remove files and directories. So once again, I'll take a look. There's that file I've just created. I realize I no longer need that and I can type rm and the name of the file and it will delete it. Now notice it deleted the file without any prompting and that can be a problem at times. I'm going to touch a new file and this time I'm going to type rm with an i option and the new file name. You'll notice that the i option causes the system to prompt me asking if I really do want to delete that file. Once again, this is a good option to use in many times because sometimes you'll delete things that you don't mean to delete and you'll have to go through the trouble of trying to recover them. We'll see when we get into this section on aliases how we can create an alias that accomplishes the rm-i option when typing just the rm command. So I'll con control C to kill that process because I actually don't want to delete that. If I want to delete a file and I do not want to be prompted for all the different files in that particular directory structure asking if I want to delete them, I can use the rm-f command to force the deletion of files and not to prompt me. I can also use rm-r for recursive to recursively delete a file structure if I no longer want it. This can be dangerous especially when running as the root user. The R argument can be especially dangerous when logged in as root. If I was to type rm-rf and put a slash at the end of it, as the root user I would be telling the system to delete all files and folders from the very top of the file system all the way down. Of course this would be a problem since we would have to reinstall the operating system after running that command. But it shows you the danger of certain commands when running as the privileged user root.